In 2242, when the Terran Alliance issued their demarcation declaration, the colonies found themselves in an untenable position. Only a tiny fraction had achieved self-sufficiency, the others relying on trade to get by, particularly imports of clean drinking water. In this hostile climate, herd instinct kicked in, and the various planets started to cluster together into micro-alliances, protonations, and trading leagues. It was a time of rapid change and forced evolution for the colonies. During the remaining 75 years of the Alliance, over two dozen new interstellar nations would arise. Among them, we can see the foundations of what would go on to form the five successor states in present day 3025. It would be a mistake, however, to think that the Rebellion marked the first appearance of these new states. Certain of them existed even prior to this in a limited or unofficial capacity. The earliest of all was a historical anomaly, dating from the first exodus and existing beyond the borders of known space. The Muskegon Empire has the dubious distinction of starting the trend. In 2163, a jumpship bound for neighbouring McHenry malfunctioned, stranding the colonists on uncharted Muskegon. This world was borderline inhospitable, and with no means to return or to contact the Alliance, the ship's crew took drastic action to ensure survival. Personal freedoms were suspended, and all available energy and manpower was poured into establishing a fragile existence. By 2177, repairs to the jumpship had been completed, but by this point a social hierarchy had developed between the original crew and the colonists on board. The former now lauded it over the rest, and had little desire to return to the Alliance and see their power surrendered. Instead, they travelled to nearby Emerson and Baton Katos, establishing new colonies using slave labour in the form of criminals and the colonist class citizens. Four more worlds would be added to the fledgling empire by 2190, and by the time their existence became well known, the Terran Alliance was on the decline, and the Muscogon Empire would become one of the dominant players in that region of space. But this dictatorship was not typical of early expansion. The scarcity of jump ships in the early days caused many corporations and conglomerates to form trading alliances to better pool resources. One of the earliest of these was the Chesterton Trading League of 2193, and later the Tamar Pact of 2235. Though initially these alliances had little interest in world governance, post-rebellion many of the two dozen major trade groups would transition in this way. The Capellan Zone, as the region of space that birthed the Capellan Confederation was known, was the most turbulent and active during this early period. Dozens of worlds were already forming alliances, and several planets would become key players in the conflicts that would arise over the next 200 years. Initially, these were one world republics, such as the Dictatorial Sana Supremacy in 2176, the Tikhonov Union in 77, the Liao Republic in 89, and the Capellan Holdfast in 93. The Capellans and Sarns quickly came to blows when explorers from the Supremacy stumbled upon the unknown colony and tried to claim ownership. The Terran Alliance was still strong enough to prevent any aggressive colonial actions within its borders, so the Capellans were able to defend themselves against the now multi-world Supremacy, and re-entered the political scene in 2194 as the Capellan Republic. The Capellans would play a key part in the First Exodus, when in 2218 they established the Capellan Library on the planet Gypher, a massive repository of information freely available to neighbouring worlds, which in turn drew many of Earth's greatest scientists into this region of space. Sensing future trouble with the supremacy, they formed the Capellan Co-Prosperity Sphere in 2220 to protect from the expansionist actions of the Sarns. Five years later, the attack came, but the Capellan militia were able to rebuff the invaders and when reinforcements arrived from off-world, the supremacy forces withdrew. It is perhaps telling that all this was going on right under the noses of the Terran Alliance without their knowledge as just a decade later the Outer Reaches Rebellion would ignite. Three case studies could be made of the planets from which future dynasties would spawn during this period. Marek, Liao, and New Avalon, home to House Davian. During the Outer Reaches Rebellion, Marek remained staunchly neutral until the 11th hour when they threw in their lot with the rebels, declaring their independence in 2238, one year after Terra had already withdrawn its forces. By 2241, the Republic of Marek was fully formed, and now counted four worlds under their control. In New Avalon, their loyalty to the Alliance was pushed past its breaking point when ever-increasing demands for crop yields created a situation where thousands risked starvation. In 2237, the Grain Rebellions would see the AGM colonial marines pushed off-world and a new democracy established. Lastly, and perhaps most ominously, the Terran ambassador dispatched to treat with Victor Liao would find himself returning to Earth without the levies he had been sent for, and also without a head. Like the New Avalonians, the Liao Republic geared up for the inevitable retribution, but it never came. 
the alliance was done with space and in 2242 formally withdrew its borders. An explosion of new interstellar players occurred during the mid 23rd century. The Federation of Orient in 2241, Nankin Collective in 42, Tikhonov Grand Union in 43, which incorporated the Chesterton Wells as a province, St. Ives Mercantile Association in 45, Dominion of Regulus in 47, and the Scion Supremacy in 2250. In more distant regions of space, the United Hindu Collective formed, as did the Rimworlds Republic in 2250, followed by the Torian Homeworlds in 53. By far the quickest off the mark, however, was the Republic of Marek. Not content with a handful of worlds that had agreed to an alliance at the outset, Marek military forces began a campaign that would see them grow the realm to 20 planets in only 5 years. After the conquest of Atreus, the Republic rebranded as the Marek Commonwealth in 2246. This made them the preeminent power of the day. What House Marek was achieving through conquest, House Allison of Orient achieved through diplomacy, likely playing off fears of Marek Commonwealth expansionism. By 2271, they had grown to rival their neighbours. The relationship between the two burgeoning powers was cool, though not hostile. Meanwhile, New Avalon's shining attempt at democratic government had collapsed. Though this had been one of the planets better prepared for independence, there was still much that needed doing and their system of yearly elections was so slow and focused on the short term that the people were suffering. A bloody civil war soon erupted among the powerful estates that would see a new order ushered in and the gradual rise of House Davian. The new government was a swing to the opposite extreme, with officials serving for life, but in the aftermath of war, stability was what was desired most. It's worth noting that not all of the newly independent world saw the rise of these new states as a positive thing. Many believed that self-governance was the best way for any planet to function, and this held true throughout most of the inner sphere. This was certainly true for the Crucis Reach, where New Avalon was situated. Corward of Earth, trading clans such as the Tamar Pact, which would eventually transition into a government, Sky Freight and Goods, and the Yazawa Mercantile Association held sway, and this region wouldn't see interplanetary unification for half a century. In the more volatile Rimward regions, new collections of planets continued to form, the Stuart Confederacy, formed in 2259, brought another dictatorship into the political sphere, and this was followed by the isolationist Ruzzlehog Concordium in 2260. Others in the Capellan Zone were restructuring to form the Chisholm Protectorate in 65, the Cyan Commonwealth in 67, and more notably, the Capellan Hegemony in 2270. By far the most significant development in inner sphere politics occurred the following year. By now, House Salage of Regulus had a trade realm to rival the Mareks and Allisons. Each counted among the most prosperous and most powerful nations in existence. But thanks to the efforts of statesman George Humphreys, war between the powers was never on the cards. After several years of intense negotiations, the three houses signed the Articles of Unification, better known as the Treaty of Marek, and unified to create a new superpower, the Free Worlds League. Though the term wouldn't be in use for another 500 years, the first of the successor states had been born. 